so far in 10 academy and they are not here okay the recording has started but <laughs> go alert the the people you know that are not here and that they should be here and of course we should let them know that stand ups are mandatory throughout the training and everyone should be here on time and we are still very very few you know so yeah but uh to those who are here so now you already know that stand ups are very very mandatory go alert your friends who are not here as well because we need to be on the same page on a daily basis so welcome to the to today's stand up uh we are going just to be talking about how was yesterday in brief it, uh, not in brief in details how was yesterday with the sessions that happened technical sessions and cbs that happened how was it and also um what are you planning to do today according to the schedule uh how are you um how are you looking forward to it specifically and we will go with volunteers people who want to go first like quick people sharp people you can raise your hands up and then we go according to the queue Let's see, let's see sharp people in the room. I'm not seeing any hands up. Okay, we have the very first person, the second person. Okay, we, we love to see this. Let's keep raising hands. I know we are ready to share so let's not wait to be called out let's be the big professionals we are okay i, I like this so let's go according to the queue jabez you can go first okay can you hear me yes we can okay uh yesterday was uh, uh very nice uh, we started week one uh we had uh, two tutorials uh and uh i go over the technical document to understand the uh, week one's challenge so uh, i think the tutorials gave me uh, understanding what uh, sh uh, i should do uh, on the uh, first task uh, to understand the stream lead source code uh, and to uh, see each code and to uh, know uh, the proper way to write the code so it was very interesting, uh, especially the, in the second tutorial. Uh, the tutor go over uh, each code and tell us uh, what we should uh, do uh, for our own code. So it was very interesting. Uh, I, I, at night, I had a, a big challenge uh, when I set up my um, uh, VS code that uh, mm -hmm. after a lot of trying, I was able to uh, run my code and try to see the stream lead source code and learn uh, things so that I could uh, modularize my own code also. So that's very interesting. Today I was working on uh, uh, to understand the data set. The, 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 uh, the, in the technical data, uh, we have a telecom data set that was given to us. So I was trying to understand the telecommunication uh, terms that uh, uh, needed to be analyzed. So it was very interesting. Uh, I think um, uh, today I will try to accomplish task two. Thank you. Okay, that's amazing. And uh, that's a very detailed report, Jabez. Keep it up as well. Yesterday I learned that uh, Jabez is one of the people who are here for changing their career path and let me tell you that you're already doing so great and we have the same people in the previous cohorts who actually did very very well you know even though they didn't have like much of the technical background so keep it up jobless we are rooting for you uh let's hear from the second person on the line who we have shayla Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, so um, yesterday was amazing, um, especially um, 
my two highlights were when we were introduced, being introduced to the challenge, because I wasn't, when I read, I had read the document around three times and I wasn't able to quite understand it. But when we were given an explanation and a briefing and people asked questions, I was able to get insights on what we were supposed to do and everything. Then also, I was really excited to during the CBS to figure to find out that most of the guys were only had one accomplishment this week, that or the previous week, which was joining um, something they were really excited about, which was joining the the program, the academy. And I was really really happy to see that everyone was in the same space as I was. And yeah, um, also I could, when it comes to the technical part, I was able to. I was able to extract the data and visualize it and see and understand how the data is structured. The one, yeah, the telecom data, mm -hmm. and I was able to view it, and that was what I was able to do yesterday. And today, I'm hoping I can be able to embark on task two because I have understood how I have understood that a little bit of the characteristics of the data, and yeah, and also from the understanding of the code, the source code that we were given, the Python source code, I was also, I'm also trying to understand it so that I can be able to work on that today. Thank you. Okay, amazing, Sheila, I'll keep it up as well. Any blockers you faced? Um, some of the blockers I faced were, some of the blockers I, fa I faced were when I was trying to extract the data using PG admin, I had some issues, but I was able to sort them. I researched a, a little bit and I was able to fix them. And also I found some help from people who had asked questions on Slack and they were experiencing the same issues as I was and we, they were offered help. So I also followed that help as well. Okay, that is amazing. That is amazing. Keep it up. Let's hear from Hilary and then Joseph. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, yesterday was a great day, uh, the, especially the the tutorial for the challenge documents. Um, I had read the document, but I uh, even asking some questions. I, I also forgot to um, to address some specific concerns. But um, our, um, our facilitator took us through uh, the some of the th key things that I forgot, uh, especially the data structures. Uh, that was something that I wanted to ask, but uh, it was great having that session that uh, pointed out certain things. And for the CPS was really great, you know, uh, seeing uh, what people have accomplished so far and uh, being proud of them. Yeah, um, you can you can really know that uh, people are making progress and they they are enjoying they enjoyed learning with zero. So the, um, for today, I'm hoping to. Um, I'm optimistic about uh, the coming the upcoming sessions about um, about the modular Python and all uh, something that is a little bit confusing, but uh, I'm hoping to get that done and uh, and also to perform the idea analysis for the data. That is what I'm hoping to get done today. Uh, yesterday, I was able also to perform the SQL uh, to retrieve the SQL. Uh, I had issues previously uh, installing Postgres SQL, but when I asked in the session, uh, when I asked in the in the session, uh, I, I was cleared up and I was able to find an alternative using Docker and uh, and go on uh, to extract the data. So I'm optimistic about today, and that's my uh, share. Thank you. Okay, that is amazing, Hillary. Um and great that you found solution to some of the blockers you faced. Of course, if you face any other one or if you have any other one you want to raise its topic, then it's also okay. You can let us know. Uh, Mahbuba, you can take over. Hello. Hey, good morning. We can hear you, Mark Hello, good morning. Yes, we can. Good 
yesterday was a bit challenging for me. Uh, I set up with the environment and, and somehow confused about uh, how to clean the data and stuff like that. How to get the decisions in the data. So, so I think today we will be doing the tutorial about that. So, mm -hmm. we, we can use this time to talk about the blocker with RefMet. Uh, RefMet, can you hear us? Hello? 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 Okay, I'm Tina. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Welcome, Tina. Mahbube is uh, has some blockages or confusions about different things. She can repeat the question and then you can help. Okay. Sure. My question is about how to create the data um, overall the data cleaning process. Are we going to remove the uh, okay, so you're asking about the, how to do data cleaning, right? Yes. Just yes. to make sure. Okay, so, well, uh, it's, it's not uh, one thing that we can do. It's, um, it depends on what... Uh, uh, let's say what column you are dealing with, right? Uh, and what uh, data type you ha you have, and what you want to achieve in the end, basically. So for some data types or for some columns that are really essential, let's say ID, for example, you have a like, customer ID at some uh, in the data. That if if you have missing data there, you have to remove the record because you cannot really do anything else for that. Uh, for some data, or let, let's say if you have numerical data or continuous data, you can use, um, uh, if the data is miss, that is missing is not huge and you really want to include this column in your uh, data analysis, then you might use some imputation. So maybe you can use, if it's in numerical data, you can use uh, the mean, for example, to replace any missing, any missing data with the mean. Uh, if you have a categor categorical data, you can replace instead. You can you cannot use the mean, of course. You have to use the mode, for example. But it depends. Uh, sometimes uh, some columns like are missing so much, uh, um, like a, a significant uh, proportion of the data is missing. So maybe you cannot, like it doesn't make sense to use it at all. Uh, before you decide on how which like. Um, uh, how to deal with the missing data you you can plot or like try to see the distribution you can use like some statistics or just like uh, and see like how the data is distributed and what what makes sense uh, of course cleaning the data also includes like maybe maybe you have errors it, 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 it's possible that the data has errors or like it has outliers Outliers also, you can decide how you you want to deal with outliers maybe you keep the outliers as is Maybe you remove them. Uh, maybe, maybe you also like uh, replace outliers uh, with um, a, uh, like a, a suitable value. So there is no one thing. There are multiple things you can do. And basically, you can um, it can be a trial and error, or like, and you can go through and then come back, like go through, like look at the data, try to understand how um, like, do the univariate analysis uh, and then come back to see like how to to deal with them, um, with the missing or like how to clean the data exactly. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. I think we will, we will have sessions on this. Yes, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs>
Okay, that's amazing. Mark Buba, are you confident about how to navigate it now? Sorry, I didn't hear you. I was asking, are you feeling confident on how you are going to be moving forward now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm confident. Thank you. That's amazing. Okay, let's hear from more people. Let's hear from more people. How was yesterday? And how are you planning to navigate today? And any blockers? Okay, Ahmed. Hello, Pascaline. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, yesterday, uh, I faced a problem with uh, Postgres. So uh, I couldn't uh, do much more progress. Uh, at the end of the day, I figured that my PG admin missing uh, a library. So I reinstalled Postgres SQL. So uh, it works now. Uh, my plan is to do the exploration today. So that's all. All right, Ahmed. Did I catch well that you managed to figure out how to work around the problem you had? Or do you want us to talk about it? Uh, can you please uh, repeat it again? I'm asking, you said you faced a problem. Did I hear well that you managed to find the solution or you want the emptiness to talk about it? Uh, okay, I, I solved the problem. Uh, if I understand okay. you right, uh, you, you, you mean can I talk about it or what you're asking? Yes, if you found the, the solution to the problem, that's 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 amazing. Okay. All right, Ahmed. Let's go okay, ahead and you. hear welcome. Let's go ahead and hear from Wandera. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yes, uh, so yesterday was uh it was okay for me until the whole postgres thing, exporting the data. I had a very big problem for about like the entire evening. I don't know, because I'm using Mac. Um, there was an issue with, uh, with the terminal. It couldn't identify where the, where the, um, uh, the Postgres files were exactly. But I did some YouTube and some Gemini. Then I, I figured it out. Then I sorted it out. But my question for today is uh, when you're doing the whole EDA process, I know there's a point where we're supposed to create classes and put them in different like Python files and then connect those files to the notebook where you're working from. So I want to know, how, is that process always required or I can just do everything, the whole the whole process in one limited Jupyter notebook file and do the whole handling of the missing files, clean the data and all that stuff. And also answer the questions without necessarily creating, I don't know, classes and functions and doing all that. So that's my question for today. All right, so Tina. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, so, um, so the question is about like how to organize the code basically. Um, I mean, you can start by doing everything. Like this is just like my advice, and it's not. Uh, um, um, maybe it's not a hard rule, and maybe uh, Rahmat can can add to this. Uh, I would say like start by doing things like uh, if you are trying to do like um, ADA, you can start by working on your notebook. Try to do whatever you you are trying to do like handling the missing data or like uh, plotting everything. Try to do that in start with doing that like on the notebook. And after you're done, after you have done significant part, you will find like while you are doing it, sometimes you are re reusing the same functions or reusing the same code to do same things. Like for example, you're plotting um, a line graph and you want to have it the same, like uh, you're, you, do, you did this several times and instead of like writing the same code over and over, you can just write a function 
and uh, that you, you can uh, start to modularize the code. And then after that, you can actually, when you like look at your code in the notebook, by the end, you might find it, it's really full of code. And you can remove these functions that you have wrote into a script instead, like into a .py file separate and import the function from there. So just start, I would say, just start by like doing like what you're trying to do in a notebook. And after like going through it, find where you can modularize the, the code um, as you go along. So it, it doesn't make sense to, I, for me at least, it doesn't make sense to start by writing. If you don't know what you are going to write, it doesn't make sense to write a, a class from the start. I don't know. But this is my advice. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, yes. It makes okay. sense. Thank All right. Okay, amazing. Let's continue. Uh, we have some questions in the chat box. Okay, I can read them out for you, Emptina, and then we continue to sell our meats and Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Then please um Modes and median or other can be used to fill the missing records, Emtina. Uh, okay, um, so the question is like. Uh how to decide to use the mode or the median. Is that the question? May, may, because I think I didn't hear part of the question. I don't know if you're hearing me right now. I'm, I'm facing a, a, a little trouble. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so just a, a rule of thumb. Uh, rule of thumb. So like uh, the mode you use with categorical data you use usually use the mean uh it makes sense to use the mean when you have numerical data you just use the mean uh for the most part um can, uh, can anybody hear her? and um yeah so this is just a, a rule of thumb like mode for categorical data and mean for for numerical data All right, Abebe, you let us know if you still have follow-up questions. It will be better also if you open your mic and then share it loudly. So in the meantime, let's continue to sell our mint. Okay, good morning, um, team. Uh, yesterday, yesterday was, I missed one of the first tutorials of the discussing the challenge for the week and that took me time to catch up on and read on my own and uh, finally i saw the youtube video and i caught up and i was working on um the loading the data into my postgres which was taking a bit of time because uh, most of the commands i was uh, searching on looking were uh, for linux based or unix based um, environment and Mine is a Windows, so that was a bit of a struggle, but I figured it out. And now I'm trying to proceed to the next tasks as well today. And there's no blockers yet, currently. Okay, so I'm always, that's great to hear. Keep it up as well. We hear from Yamasi.
Yamusi, can you hear us? Yamusi or Michael? Okay, Michael, I was seeing your hand up. Let me know if you can hear me. Can I confirm that you can hear me, guys? Some reactions? Okay, thank you. Okay, as uh, I'm not sure about probably the first technical in issues, so let's hear from other people. How was yesterday? And how are you planning to go about today? And any blockers? Okay, baby, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. So yesterday I was uh, participating in this training and I was trying to catch up some uh, things from the stand-ups in the afternoon tutorial. Then I, I tried to manage my working my working uh, PC, uh, but, but I, I was uh, got some blockers to install the PG admin, but I tried to uh, solve it uh, by uh, searching on some uh, online sources so that I can uh, manage to solve that. And I was uh, trying to see some data overview from the uh, given data. And uh, today I am planning to do the ED analysis on the given data. That's it. All right, Abibi. And regarding the question you had. Regarding the questions, I have uh, got the answer from me. Mm, yeah. That Thank is. You. Okay, that is that now. Great. So I can see, Bethlehem, that you also have a problem in the chat box. Do you want to open your mic and talk about it? Okay. Okay. All right. But I believe. Uh, you also got different answers in the chat box. Let us know if you feel confident about it now. Otherwise, we still have a few minutes, so let's hear more blockers. This is the opportunity for us to get our questions answered so that we don't get stuck when we are actually keep, when we keep having more uh, things being added on our table. So let's pick up. Okay, Kumi. Welcome. Uh, good morning and thank you. I think yesterday was a little bit overwhelming and I tried to find myself. But the problem is that I was, although, let's say I'm, I'm still a little bit confused about how to structure my code. And I think the most important thing is that I'm, I was trying to clone uh, the GitHub repository that you provide us, and I don't really know why, but it's not working. Um, I can try to send later the, the error I'm getting into the slide, but it, I search on it and I find, I find out for the first error, I find out that it was a problem of uh, internet. Uh, the speed of my internet, but I don't really know why. Right? So, and, uh, and then the next thing is that I was, I'm also a little bit confused about the GitHub repository that we should understand and analyze. Also, maybe I can wait in here. So, Kumi, were you trying to clone the stream repo or? Yeah. yeah. That's probably the file is big, so that's probably your internet connection. You have to fix that or be in a better place, it will close. 
that's just not a problem, it's just a mechanical problem. The file is too big, I need a strong connection to clone everything. Do you think yes. that I can just download the zip file and yes. open it in there? You can do that. You can also download the zip file and extract it on your machine. Okay, thank you. You have you will get the same result. Uh, what was the other question? Is there other question or? Yeah, I was saying that I was I'm a little bit confused about how to structure the code. Like I don't I'm not seeing uh, any kind of let's say relationship between uh the the code that you provide us the github repository that you provide us and um, the data analysis that we are doing yes. like i have the impression that the the, the github repository is mainly about the stream leads why we are dealing with data set and all this stuff here i don't maybe i don't i have to check other folder i'm missing something so I think you're confused how you can connect the Streamlit with this with projects regarding the structuring. Is that what confuses you? Uh, I can hear you. Okay, uh, I'm just trying to make clear the confusion here. Are you confused how you can make the connection between the Streamlit structure and this week project? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, as for, as for that, I also was trying to mention that yesterday, you can all uh, use the uh, starter code that you used last week, on week zero. It's okay to do that. It's just if you find something useful from the streamlit structure, you can try to implement it on your site. You don't have to build this week challenge above the streamlit uh, repo. That's not okay. what we are asking. It's just if we say something that is useful that you think on the streaming structure that you can implement on yours, you can just try to implement that on your site. But as for which structure I should start with, you can use the week zero starter code and just modify it based on streamlit structure, Python code, modules, anything that is uh, you might find useful for you to use. Um, is that a bit clear now? Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. That's amazing. Salamowitz, uh, any question? Yes. So, like, continuing from this question, uh, I was also wondering how, um, what we are expect expected to add on our GitHub. Is it? Are we supposed to just build all of the data processing and all of that on the Streamlight uh, part of it? Or are we supposed to have notebooks where we do the processing and then we use the outputs of that in the Streamlight app uh, section of it? Or are we just expected to just do the Streamlight section? Okay, just to make it easier for everyone, use the week zero star star code for this week challenge also. But if you find something useful that on the Streamlight structure coding Python code that they use, Implement it on this one. There are definitely useful things that you can take from the Streamlit repo. Try to implement that on the uh, on the last week, week zero starter. You do you remember that one, right? Use that one to, to start your basis for this week project. That add any useful additional thing from the Streamlit structure on this one. So you don't have to build your project above the Streamlit repo. The big project. Don't do that. Just use the uh, last week zero starter code and build that, that modify that, make it better. It's on the stream resource code. Uh, is that clear, Salomon? Yes. Okay. All right. Amazing. Thanks, Rahmet. Uh, let's hear from Michael. Yeah, good morning. Uh, yesterday was a bit uh, difficult, but I managed to do it, left uh, some of the installation part. And uh, I have one question. My question is some of the data are the missing data, and the, the percent is like some of, some of them 65% or 
58 percent and we like uh, i gather some information so some of it says we can drop it uh, we should drop it some uh, if if it is uh, above 30 percent we should drop it like the thumbs up rule but in task 4 4.2 for example there is a tcp values in the data set we we should use that data but if we we drop it how can we use it so should we drop it or should we clean it by using mean or mod yeah this is my question okay so uh, if that particular column is still for task four don't drop it just replace it with me all uh, forward and backward filling mechanisms which you will see on today's tutorial so the column and information is important to have to do the start don't drop it just replace it by mean mode uh, today you will see on the tutorial different mechanism to replace uh, missing values so i think you should do that mike but normally it's yeah it's recommended right like when the missing value is too much it's better to drop it uh, if the on the task board, if that's included, you should go on filling the missing values. Okay, thank you. So, Grace, to answer your question on the Slack uh, on the chat. Okay, if you are using Docker, maybe reach out on the Slack. There are others who are using Docker to install, uh, to extract the data using Docker. Uh, that is uh, the suggestion that I can give you, or if there's a, anyone who tried to do this extraction using Docker, you can go ahead and speak up and help Grace. It's Taking too much time you will, for you since uh, if you are Docker, maybe you just install the post SQL database to your machine and try to install it without Docker. But other than that, if there's anyone who are trying to use Docker for extracting the post SQL, please reach out to um, uh, for Grace and help her out. Yeah, like you already said, you should post this one on the Slack, Grace. Okay, ask Alin over to you. Okay, uh, we are almost behind time, but it's okay as we were answering questions. So we can take one last question, but if there are no any other question then we call it a day get ready for today's schedule anyone okay all right so if you face any blocker by the way uh don't wait for tomorrow's stand up just put it in the chat sorry on slack in all week one that's much better and everyone will be happy to help you out. So thank you everyone for joining. Let's get ready for the next session that is starting in 19 minutes. Have a great day.